Chapter 3 I lay on the floor for a moment, pain stinging my head and back, my ears still ringing. Finally, it all started to die down and go away, including the haziness. Mara, are you okay? Falzar kept crying. He was flying in frenzied circles right above me. I sat up straight, rubbed the back of my head. A bruise was already pushing up there. The magical weapon lay on the ground in front of me. I hadn't even realized I'd dropped it. Yes, yes, I, I believe so. Oh, thank goodness. Falzar perched on the floor beside me. Oh, Mara, I told you this was an absolutely dreadful idea. Put that horrible thing away right now. Yes, yes, I think that's a good idea. And then I realized something else. Oh, no. No, no, no. What? What is it? Falzar's eyes were the size of fireballs he was constantly spouting. I'd never seen him look so scared. I pointed at the table. It was completely broken, lying in a jumble of different sized pieces all across the floor, a couple of small chunks next to Falzar and me. Falzar shook his head slowly as he beheld the wreckage himself. Oh, Gulak scat! Now you've really done it, Mara. Wait until Mother comes home and sees this atrocious mess. Not only that, she'll know you used the magical weapon as well. I know, I know. I put my hands to my head, pinched my hair between my fingers so hard my scalp burned. We'll have to try to put it all back together again before she comes home for lunch. But first... I picked up the weapon, grasping the large wooden part with one hand and the long metal part with the other. It was really awfully heavy. Mara, be careful, Falzar squawked. I know, I know. Don't worry. I won't activate it by accident. I have to squeeze the tiny metal curly thing with my finger to do that, and I won't even touch that part. You better be right about that, young lady. I climbed back onto the chair, but before I could place the weapon back in the cabinet, I saw there were a couple of other things in there too, sitting toward the back, shrouded in dimness. I must have been so excited about seeing that weapon up close, so incredibly stupid of me, that I hadn't noticed them before. But I wasn't sure what they were. They looked like some kind of small gold metal can, the other a large brush of sorts resting on top of it. What is it? Falzar asked from his perch on the floor. Why are you stalling, Mara? Oh, no reason. No point mentioning the mysterious objects to him. I'd already gone and been a complete idiot by opening the cabinet in the first place. Falzar had been right all along. I should have listened to him. And mother. I hefted the weapon higher, careful to keep the end with the hole away from me just in case, and eased it inside the cabinet. Then I closed the cabinet and hopped down off the chair. Then something hit me. Wait a minute. How could I have activated the weapon, even if accidentally? The cabin realm doesn't have a magic current so it shouldn't be possible at all. Falzar flapped his wings hard beside me on the floor, his silence telling me he was thinking hard. I admit that's a very good question, Mara, and I certainly don't have the answer, but either way, I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation for it. Now let's clean up this mess. Hmm, yeah. But I couldn't fight the feeling something was off here, horribly off. Had Mother lied to me? Or was she just plain wrong about the fact the weapon could be used in the cabin realm? Was my recent enormous fear actually true? That father and perhaps mother could be wrong about something that had to do with my magical destiny? The disturbing questions kept spinning around in my head as Falzar and I tried to clean up the broken table. But unfortunately, it was impossible. There were so many tiny pieces lying among the bigger ones that it was hard to even figure out how they all went together. And then there was the bigger problem of not being able to actually attach them to one another once we figured that out. Plus, if all that wasn't enough, there was yet another stranger issue too. Hidden among the large jumble of pieces were a few tiny silver balls, which definitely weren't part of the table. Falzar and I couldn't recognize them at all, which meant they must have come from the weapon. We didn't even want to touch them in case they were full of dark, potentially dangerous magic. So, unfortunately... Everything was pretty much still a huge mess when Mother came back for lunch a little while later, carrying a gulak skin bag, as usual. As I expected, she took in the room with one sweep of her gaze, then dropped the bag and clapped both her hands to her face. Oh, Mara, what in the illustrious history of Alandra have you done? She rushed up to me and gripped my shoulder so hard it hurt. 
giving me a quick, thorough look up and down. Are you all right, sweetheart? Are you? Yes, I murmured. I'm fine, mother, and so is Falzar. Of course. Though, of course, I wasn't fine. Not at all. I disobeyed her. I'd done exactly what she told me not to do, and broken the kitchen table. I was the worst daughter ever. As I expected, her face morphed a deep scarlet, her arms trembling so hard they shook my shoulders. Mara, you deliberately disobeyed me. I told you not to even peek at the magical weapon, but what do you do? You not only go ahead and do so, but you actually activate the hazardous thing, and as a result destroy the only table in the cabin realm. You could have been horribly, horribly hurt if not killed, both you and Falzar. What do you have to say for yourself, young lady? It was hard to meet her eyes, but somehow I managed. My own lips quivered as I said, I don't know, mother. What I really wanted to do was ask her how it was even possible to activate the weapon in the cabin realm in the first place. But now was not the time, not even remotely. You don't know? You don't know? She yanked her hands from my shoulders and stood back, stabbing me with a gaze as sharp as a full-grown dragon's tooth. Her facial features were so tight it seemed her entire head would explode any second. Is this the thanks I get, Mara? Is this the thanks I get for everything I've done for you over the past eleven years of your life? For raising you? For giving you unconditional love and support? Heck, for even bringing back Falzar a few years ago so you'd have somebody to keep you company while I was out hunting all day long? Huh? But before she said she brought him back to raise him since his parents had been killed by Shadrith's. Still... I had to thank the great creator of Alondra since she had done that. I'd been so hopelessly lonely until Falzar came along. Sure, her mother was my mother, but Falzar was my only friend. I opened my mouth to say I was sorry, but she continued. Oh, and speaking of hunting, every single day I go out into the incredibly dangerous world of Alondra to take down a gulak. Or two if I'm lucky. Just so you, Falzar, and I actually have something to eat around here on a regular basis. And is this the thanks I get for all that as well? My gaze dropped to the floor again. It took every last bit of willpower I had left to shake my head, my vision growing blurry. There was no denying it, no way. I'd done it. I'd done it big this time. No, mother. You don't deserve this. Not a single bit. I'm a terrible daughter, the worst in all the history of Alondra. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You had better be, young lady. Now off to the loft with you without lunch. Hopefully an empty stomach for the rest of the afternoon will make you realize the despicable error of your ways. Yes, yes, of course, mother. So, so sorry again, mother. I began heading toward the stairs that led up to the loft. And never touch the magical weapon again. Do you hear me, young lady? Don't even open the cabinet where it is stored. Do you understand me? I turned back around. Yes, of course, mother. I swear I won't. And this time I really mean it. You had better. I rushed upstairs and sprawled on my mattress, tears streaming down my cheeks now. This was easily the worst day of my life, by far. I disobeyed and hurt Mother, one of the two people, including Falzar, I cared about most in this cold, cruel world, incredibly badly. How could she ever forgive me for this? Would she ever forgive me for this? Please tell me she will. Please, great creator of Alondra. Falzar flew up and landed beside me on the mattress. He opened his mouth, but I said, Don't say it. I know you were right. I should have listened to you all along. He closed his mouth, then leaned against me, nuzzling his snout under my chin. That was how we fell asleep, but I was so horribly depressed about what I'd done I slept the entire rest of the day, then the whole night. Non-stop nightmares about Mother, Lord Sycorath, and the magical weapon haunted me the entire time.